Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to solve root locus problems. And based on this concept, we will solve some questions. So let's get started. So let's take this question and uh, we will solve it in steps. So this is the transfer function of a system and uh, this is the equation that is given to us. Now, the first step is to calculate zeros, poles and the number of branches in this system. The second step is to draw the predicted graph. Now, we will calculate the angle of asymptotes and centroid of the system. Now, again, we will draw the predicted graph. Now, we will calculate the breakaway point or break-in point. After this, we will identify the point of intersection. After this, we will calculate the angle of departure or angle of arrival. After this, we will draw the graph on the graph sheet. Make sure you have a graph sheet. Graph sheet is compulsory in this problem. So let's start solving this problem as the first step says to calculate the zeros and poles of the system. So here, what is zero? The number which will make the entire function as zero. So here we can see that nothing is there to make this function as zero. So here there are no zeros. Now let's see what is pole. Pole is the number which will make the denominator to zero and the overall is equals to infinity. So here if I put s equal to zero, the overall denominator will become zero. And also if I put s is equals to minus two, the overall denominator will become zero. In the same manner, if I calculate the roots of this equation and if I put that s values in this equation, then the whole denominator will become equal to zero. So that is pole. So if so here I can write s equals to zero minus two and after solving this equation let's solve this i'll show you this is equals to zero we can directly see that this is a plus b format a plus b whole square format equal to zero so here the s values are minus two and minus two so here we are having pole on the same point minus two three times fine now we will calculate how many branches do we have first we got 0 equal to 0 and poles equal to 4 for branches we have to take maximum of pole and 0 so maximum of pole and 0 is 4 so in the overall diagram graph we will having we will be having four branches fine after this we will draw the predicted graph so let's draw the predicted graph So the poles are on 0, minus 2, minus 2 and minus 2. The pole will be at 0, at minus 2, right? So we will draw it 3 times. Like this it should appear. Fine. Now we can see that 0, there is no 0 in this system. So I will tell you how to draw a 0. Draw, to draw a 0, we just have to put a circle. If you put a circle, let's say if ha we have a 0 at minus 1, then you just put a circle at that point. That's it. For pole, we put a cross mark on that point. So now we will calculate the angle of asymptotes and centroid. So for angle of asymptotes, there is a formula equal to 2q plus 1 by p minus z into 180 degrees. So here you might ask what is the q value? So q value is equals to p minus z terms. p minus z terms means 4 minus 0 terms. This is equals to starting from 0. 0, 1, 2, 3. We are having four terms starting from zero. So we have to substitute zero, one, two, and three, one by one into this equation. After solving this equation, we will get angles as 45 degree at Q equal to zero and 135 degree at Q equal to one and 225 degrees at Q equal to two and lastly 315 degrees at Q is equals to three. So finally, I have substituted every value in this equation and I have got these four angle of asymptotes. Now we will calculate the centroid. The denotion of centroid is sigma. So for sigma, we will write centroid is equals to sum. So the real value of poles 
uh, all the poles are having only real value there is no imaginary pole here so we will add all those poles 0 minus 2 minus 2 and minus 2 and we will subtract the zeros as we are having no zero here we will just write simply zero by p minus z p minus z4 minus zero so we will get sigma is equals to minus six by four and this value will come out to minus one by five so the centroid lies on minus one by five and the angle of assumed roads are 45 135 225 and 315 so let's draw again the predicted graph now i'll draw the predicted graph And no zeros now we got the centroid at minus 1 by minus 1.5 so here we are having minus 1.5 right this is minus 1.5 and the angle of asymptotes are 45 225 315 and uh, 135 right and we will draw that sorry I forgot to click on the record button uh, basically what I did is I just put it this middle point on minus 1.5 and took 45 degrees and again 135 degrees and uh, you can see that 45 and 125 are opposite to each other and 135 and uh, 315 are opposite to each other so i drew just a straight line opposite to it and i notated the angle of every line on this graph so this is the predicted graph always use this protector in exam because you have to use this to draw the angles in the main graph sheet okay now after this we have to draw what is the break away point or break in point so how to know a point is a breakaway or break in point so to know the breakaway or break in point we have to first know that if a root locus exists in this graph or not so how to say that a root locus exists in this graph or not so see from here like assume that this is a wall and these are the balls placed on this line okay so when you see towards the right side there is one ball and two ball but basically this is three ball and this is one ball so we are having four balls in this room okay the four ball means even ball four is even so root locus doesn't exist doesn't exist between minus infinity to this point okay now if i stand here and if i see towards the right side there is only one ball which is placed which is touching the wall and that is placed by touching the wall so so one is odd number so root locus exists root locus exists where between these two points so draw it by darking dark this region so that it will get known that the root locus exists between these two points so first assume that this is a wall imaginary axis is a wall and this poles or zeros are the balls in the room placed on a line and see towards the right side how many balls are there if the number of balls that means number of zeros and poles are even then root locus doesn't exist and if the number of balls are odd then root locus will exist between the two balls this is clear now for breakaway or break in point we have to take this characteristic equation what do you mean by characteristic equation the denominator part is called the characteristic equation of the equation so we will add plus k to it then this will become the characteristic equation now we will multiply overall equation will become now i will shift this overall equation to that side and i'll keep k onto the left hand side now i will differentiate this equation with respect to s and i'll bring this minus to this side and finally at the time of differentiating this equation i'll equate it to zero so that i can get the roots so this is the equation and i'll equate it to zero so after this i'll find the roots by keeping this equation in a calci don't waste your time by solving this equation in examination just use calci you should know the use of calci to minimize the time in this solving this question for now i'm writing the roots of this equation normally but i'll keep another video show you that how to get the roots of an equation in calci so the root will come as minus 0 0.5 and minus 2 so now we have to see that which of the point are valid in our root locus so to check that first note out these values and see if this lies on the root locus or not we got minus 0 0.5 right so 0 0.5 is on the root locus then this root is valid and also we got minus 2 minus 2 is also on the root locus so this point is also valid so both of our roots are valid this both are valid so we got our breakaway point and how to check that it is a 
break away point or a break in point see if we have a pole then that is a break away point and if we have a zero that is a break in point so if we have a pole on the axis then arrows will go from away from it and if we have a zero then our arrows will come inside of it assume that this is a black hole which is uh, taking everything inside of it so every arrow will go towards the hole and whenever there is a pole it will go outside the pole or outside of the point so now we will draw the assumption of the root locus let's see how the arrows will go and on the graph it's sigma j omega minus j omega and minus sigma minus one minus two and here three poles are there here one pole is there and we got the root locus in between zero and minus two so this is minus 1.5 so the root locus was this and this point right so we will draw an arrow towards this this is the break of a point right minus 2 and minus 1.5 both are break of a point so to start this rh criteria we will take the first highest power of s and we will write it in a descending manner now we will take all the alternating numbers that means starting from s power 4 there is one the coefficient of s power is 1 so we wrote 1 so the next number will be alternate to this that means coefficient of s square that is 12 and the next the last constant that is k now in next line we will take s3 coefficient that is 6 and again we will take the next alternate coefficient that is 8 now remaining after this we have nothing so we will leave it off or you can write 0 here now for this number i have to multiply these two and subtract by multiplying these two that means 6 into 12 minus 8 into 1 and also don't forget to divide it by 6 so this value i will get like so we got this value as 10.66 so i will directly write it and for the next value we will again do the same thing 8k minus 12 minus 0 that means i could write 8k minus 12 into 0 is 0 only divided by 8 this is come this will come as k so i'll write k here after this again i'll multiply these two values and subtract by multiplying these two values that means 10.66 into 8 minus 6k divided by 10.66 so i'll get this value as 85.28 minus 6k by 10.66 so i'll write this number and the remaining value is 0 here so just leave it off otherwise just write it uh, as bigger to write this number so that it will be comfortable to write a 0 here for now i'm just leaving off and uh, if i multiply these two numbers and uh, subtract by multiplying 10.66 and 0 i'll get 85.28 minus by 85.28 minus 6k by 10.66 so it it will get cancelled and we'll get k finally remember that this coefficient and the final value should match then only the answer is correct otherwise something is wrong in your calculation or the equation so now in this equation we will take the auxiliary equation so the number this is having just one thing and uh, after this this equation can be taken as the auxiliary equation that is 10.66 x square plus k so i have took this as our auxiliary equation and after this we have to calculate this k value so to k value i have to see that which row can be made equal to zero so here this row can be made equal to zero so i wrote this value equal to k so if i calculate k value i'll get some value as Fourteen point two one. If I set it here, minus one point three three. So, I got s square equal to minus one point three three. If I write it s value, if I one point one five j plus or minus. This is the s value. So this is the point of intersection on imaginary axis. So just now we have calculated the point of intersection on the imaginary axis the next step was to calculate the angle of arrival or angle of departure the angle of arrival or angle of departure we have to see that if our equation that we got in the starting this poles and zeros equals if our pole will have imaginary part then the system will have angle of departure and if our zero will have uh, imaginary part then our system will have angle of arrival but in this case none of them are having any imaginary part so our system is having no angle of arrival or angle of departure so we will skip this part and we will draw the final graph on the graph sheet 
till this time we got values which are this zero uh, this poles zeros uh, angle of asymptotes centroid this break away point and uh, this point intersection point on imaginary axis after the graph sheet let's draw the imaginary axis and real axis this is the let's take two divisions as one and minus two minus three this is zero so at zero we are having a pole and at two we are having three poles and there is no zero in the system next we have to see the centroid centroid it is at minus 1.5 and uh, after this we will take the point of intersection point of intersection was at minus uh, 1.5 j and plus 1.5 j so this is one let's take this as one so 1.5 will be here one point that was 1.15 right 1.15 so 1.1 will come out here from 1.15 j let's raise this and this is one this is minus 1.15 j so your x axis two units equal to one y axis also two units equal to two now we have this at k value what is k value 14.21 at k equal to 14.21 now the angle of sorry this point breakaway points are minus 2 this and minus 0 0.5 this minus 0 0.5 so from this point we will make a curve which will touch these two axes so i'll draw this like this and like this and from this point also i'll draw the same curve which will be going out of it and we will draw those outgoing arrows so this is our final graph but still it, it is incomplete because the number of branches we got was four so here we got one branch two branch three and four branch but we have to darken it by making this dark it will become clear that these are the four branches of our system so finally this zero is having pole minus two is having three poles root locus exists between zero and minus two these two points minus 0 0.5 and minus two are break away points and minus 1.5 1 and plus 1.15 are point of intersection in this graph sheet and we are having one two three four branches that's all for this video if you understood this concept then don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to my channel for more such videos thanks for watching